Josh McDaniels can do is shake his head. It pains me because I love covering the Las Vegas Raiders. They've got passionate fans. They've got a talented roster, but they're being held back by their head coach, Josh McDaniels. And I say that because for one, I watch the games, but two, you have to realize that, I mean, last season he was the problem, right? Derek Carr ends up being benched. Well, Derek Carr just had an amazing game against the Colts and was able to get that win on the road. The Saints offense looks fantastic. Hunter Renfro was a guy that went over a thousand yards. And then new coach, new personnel comes in. All of a sudden, this guy's non-existent. And understand that Renfro is not a perfect receiver. He struggles to beat press, and he does have some drops. But you don't go from a thousand-yard receiver to a guy that is not even seeing any targets. Like Renfro, I mean, did see four targets, but the, the past couple of games was just really the past two seasons has been completely non-existent. And then the run game for the Raiders. Speaking of non-existent. We haven't seen that going the entire year. 15 for 61 isn't terrible with a touchdown. But, you know, Josh Jacobs, I mean, he led the league in scrimmage last season. We're still waiting to see that Josh Jacobs return. And then just the, the biggest thing from this video is Devontae Adams. Because if I'm the Las Vegas Raiders, I don't know if I can trade Devontae Adams. Because it's not like we're playing men, right? I mean, this is real life. The Raiders are 3-5. and five. They can still make the playoffs. They've got one of the best players in football. You can't just trade them, even if you're getting a bunch of assets, even if a team's willing to overpay. You can't just trade Devontae Adams because you're basically signaling to the fans and the and the, the franchise that, yeah, we're pulling the plug, man. The season's over. And I don't think it's, I think it's too early for that, being real with you. And yeah, like I'd love to see Adams play for a contender, but if I'm the Raiders, I just, I don't think I can trade this guy. And uh, Jacoby Myers, who had been playing well this season, one for 19. Jimmy didn't even complete a pass in the first half. He took six sacks. He had an interception. Threw for just 126 yards. Like, I kid you guys not. I almost benched Sam Howell in fantasy for Jimmy because I wanted a reason to watch this game. And I ended up watching it anyway just for the fun of it. But imagine if I did that. I would have lost this week to the number one seed. I'm now the one seed because I started Howell. But, you know, I digress. That's completely irrelevant. But, yeah, like the thing for Las Vegas is that it's not like they don't have good football players. It's just they don't have the right head coach because even Patrick Graham their defensive coordinator I like a lot I think he's done a great job this season he's definitely the best coach on this entire staff on whatever side you want to talk about but it's just time for the Raiders to figure this out because they've been competitive this season I mean last week they got absolutely embarrassed by the Chicago Bears but before that they beat the Patriots who yes I know they suck and um, the week before that, I'm trying to think, who did the Raiders play? That was, uh, didn't they like barely, was that the Chargers game, right? They, yeah, it's not letting me scroll up, but they barely lost to the Chargers. That was with O'Connell, his first career start. I mean, you got a rookie out of Purdue starting that game, and it was very close. And then, of course, we saw them have that sneak by the Broncos, and they, the Bills did get them pretty badly. But that's the thing for Las Vegas is this is a competitive team. They play hard. And for the defense, they showed a lot about their character, as I mentioned, Patrick Graham, because the offense was ass. Let's be real. Seven of those 14 points were from a pick six, thanks to, of course, Marcus Peters. And the defense, just to get out there and hold the Lions after turnovers and all these sacks and just non-existent production, to hold them to field goals, or to get them off the field against a dangerous Lions offense that's at home that's coming off of a bad loss, one of the worst losses maybe that we've ever seen from the Lions. Um, I'm not going to speak for their fan base, but it just it felt like that, it, I mean, especially considering the circumstances. The Lions get off to this amazing start. They're on the road against the Ravens, and then it's like the same old Lions, right? So that's the thing for the Raiders is playing hard. And it seems like the offense just it hasn't played hard this season, and it hasn't more so it hasn't played smart. You know, like they've got to sit down and be like, how can we get rid of the ball quickly into our playmakers' hands? Because you can't tell me that Jimmy doesn't have any weapons. You can't tell me that this offensive line is garbage. It's not even that bad. Like the run lanes it created was good. Jimmy had time. It's just he's holding onto the football. It's very similar to what we saw in Justin Fields early on in the season, just holding and holding and holding the ball. And Jimmy's been in the league long enough to be able to read a defense and know where to get it and know when to get rid of it. And he's just been bad. He's been flat out bad. And if I'm the Raiders, I'm firing the head coach. I'm benching Jimmy. I'm putting in O'Connell. And no, I'm not trading Devontae Adams because, first of all, you don't trade players like that, like I just said. But also, we've got a rookie in there, and we want to make sure that he's got that number one guy. We want to make sure that he's got a player that he can trust right away on the outside, especially one on one. Michael Mayer, of course, uh, Jacob Myers inside, like Hunter Renfro, like all these weapons. Josh Jacobs, I mean, on paper, the Raiders should be winning games. 
but they're not. And you have to think, why is that? And nine times out of 10, it's going to come back to the coaching staff, right? It's going to come back to the head coach. And I feel like if the Raiders fire their head coach, it's going to send a spark through this team because look at who the Raiders have next. They've got the Giants at home. They've got the Jets at home. Those are two winnable games. The Jets are a good football team, but you're at home. Your defense is playing well right now. You got to figure out a way to win that game. Giants are the same thing. Dolphins, Chiefs, absolutely brutal games. Probably lose both of those. And then you've got the Vikings, you know, the Chargers. Two games that could go either way. The Vikings without Kirk Cousins at home, you've got to be able to win that game. And then Chiefs, Colts, Broncos. So if we're being honest, let's say they beat the Giants and they beat the Jets. They lose to the Dolphins and the Chiefs 2-2. Two and two. They beat the Vikings 3-2. and two. They beat the Chargers. They're 4-2. and two. They're at home. They're definitely going to find a way to win that game. And then they get to the Chiefs. They lose that 4-3. and three. They beat my Colts 5-3. and three. And then they beat the Broncos, so they own their 6-3. and three. You add in six more wins to the Raiders the rest of the season, that would put them, because they're right now they're 3-5, and five, that would put them at 9-8, and eight, which probably won't make the wild card. But that's the type of team that I saw the Raiders. I remember saying that it's going to come down to the last week of the season for the Raiders, and it legitimately could, but they'd have to have a team lose and they'd have to win. And I know I'm getting ahead of myself, but that's how I've always viewed the Raiders as a team that will be competitive. They're not going to be a contender, but they're not going to be one of the worst teams in the AFC. They're going to have a lot of talent, a lot of firepower, and they're going to be able to win some games because last season, you know, the Raiders lost as many one possession games as any team. And this season, it's been close as well, but it's just time for them to look in the mirror and, and ask themselves, what's the problem, man? Why do we keep losing these games? You know, Why are we not getting it done every week? Why are we having... Devontae Adams just have one catch, right? Last week, the same thing. Devontae Adams, I mean, of course, he did have that missed catch in the back of the end zone. Brian Horner threw him that fade route that he liked to have back, but I just, Adams has not been existent this season, man. And we've, been, we've been saying that the entire season. So that's on the play caller, man. It's as simple as that. If, if your best player, one of the best players in the entire league, is not getting the ball, that comes down to the play caller. I mean, we saw Jamar Chase complain about not getting the ball and what has he been doing ever since he's been racking up 100 yard games and touchdowns like it's nothing so i mean receiver like cd lamb i don't know if he's that could complain but i mean cd lamb did just have a monster performance of course against the los angeles rams who believe it or not are paying their corners the lowest amount of money in football and they've been playing well but they had no answer for the cowboys offense on cd lamb so that's really all i have for you guys i am sick so i apologize if you made it to the end of the video let me know your thoughts on my my opinion do you agree with me do you disagree do you think that i'm overreacting or do you think that serious changes should get done before it's too late because i don't know what the raiders are waiting for man i mean yeah firing a coach season isn't ideal but it isn't ideal either to let this continue because if, if the raiders do they are going to win six games man they're going to be no different than they were last year